This is the Sika 100 hunting knife made by Solonaca France and sold by Decathlon. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this budget-friendly knife, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, a couple of things. First off, I purchased this knife myself. I just happened to be going through the Decathlon website one day looking at their hunting clothing because I wanted to see if there was anything I could use for bushcraft. And I saw this knife and I saw $20 Canadian. Is that actually a good knife? Well, that's the only way to find out was to buy it, so I did. I purchased it for myself. I've been testing it out a little bit here and there, and I'm ready to give you my thoughts on it if you're interested. Now, what I'm gonna do is just bring the camera in so you can focus on the knife, get some detail on it. I'll go through its specifications. We'll talk about what I see as its intended use, and of course, we'll do a few demonstrations with it. All right, just before we focus in on the knife itself, let's take a look at the sheath. So this is the sheath the knife came with. It's Mora looking but it has some distinct differences from other Morris sheaves. It's a good heavy-duty thermal molded plastic little drain hole on the bottom. Retention's a little bit different. You can see there's slots on either side. That allows the thumb wrap to lift and close over the edge of the knife. So that's, that's where the retention is. Belt loop. Very simple, but holds onto your belt. You can take it on and off. Um, this portion right here, a little bit curved to hold close to the knife, but more importantly, what does it look like in the sheath? And let's talk about retention. So going in, it is very positive. You can hear that snap going in. It's holding that in. There's no amount of shaking that is gonna make that come out. Getting it out is a little bit of an issue for me, and I'll explain. Uh, it may work better if I demonstrated this on my belt where the belt clip itself will form some kind of a resistance to me pulling the knife, but I can't get my hands around the knife in order to use the thumb wrap. So it's a little awkward to take it off. But now once you do, I mean, it's, it's, it comes out once it's, you know, very easily once you actually push on off on it, but it's because of the way it is formed so close to the handle, I just can't get my hand around the edge of the knife. I'll tell you what I'm likely to do after this review, at least to try and see if it will work. Let me just take the knife out of the sheath and I'll show you. Hair dryer or heat gun, I'm thinking about bending the top portion out and then up again. So it creates a little bit of a, a zigzag up. So it comes away from the sheath a little bit and just pushes it maybe a little bit away from the belt, but more importantly, pushes this portion away from the handle just to make it a little easier for, to get my hand on to retrieve it. The nice thing is it's super secure, super solid in there. All right, let's put the sheath away. I'll bring the knife in. We'll do a few specifications for it. So. Overall length, 8.8 .8 inches, 220 millimeters. That's from tip to pommel, of course. Blade length, 3.9 inches, 10 centimeters. Blade thickness, 0.1 inch or 2.5 millimeters. Weight with the sheath is 6.17 ounces or 175 grams. And yes, I left the steel to the end. So this is the third knife that I have reviewed recently using this steel. This is the Chinese 5CR. 15 MOV stainless steel, hardened to be around 56 HRC. I say the third knife, you know, I didn't think I would ever want to review a knife in that steel, but like I said, I've reviewed a couple of others prior to this knife in that steel, and do you know, it's not as bad as you might think it is. I know that most people will roll their eyes, myself included, that's a very budget basement bottom you know, price steel made in China. By the way, just to be clear on this, this may be made by Solonac or the company, but they still had it offshore production made in China. So just to be clear on that, but you know, it's all about the quality of the construction. So here's what I'm gonna say about the steel now. We'll test it out and we'll have a few more words. It works. It's working for me. It's holding up to the task. It's not staying sharp at forever. It's not a super steel, and well, anything but a super steel, but it is up to the task. And here's the thing about owning a budget knife. By the way, did I say $20 Canadian? I thought that was pretty good price. Uh, about, the, about owning a knife with an inexpensive steel like this or an inexpensive knife, you get to learn how to sharpen properly, and you will. You'll have to, you'll have to sharpen every knife you own, but it's nice to do so on an inexpensive knife, especially one with a steel that's very forgiving, and you can make a few mistakes and still get the knife sharp with a little bit more practice. So just a different way of looking at steel. But 
that's only good if it'll actually perform. If I get out here and it starts rolling or chipping and doesn't stay sharp and long enough for at least a day or two's work but without having to do something to it, then it's not worth it. But it has for me and it will today when I demonstrate it to you. All right, a little bit about the design of the knife and some of its key features. So it is a, it's not a full tang, but Solanac advertises as being a three-quarter tang, so about here. You know, that's no different than a Mora. In other words, the tang may be hidden, but it's most of the way back. It should withstand quite a bit of hard use. Now, I don't know if today I'll do any batoning with it, because once again, this is a small knife I think is best served for carving, but I think you could, with enough confidence, at least small pieces of wood, that you could baton them through if you wanted to. The plastic is hard, you can probably hear that molded, uh, or the plastic, the handle. The handle is a hard plastic. Now, just a few comments on the handle. It's kind of blocky looking. It does have edges right here. It's not completely rounded over. There's not a lot of grip to it. There's not a lot of width through here or through here. A little bit of a finger choil in an angular fashion here. A little bit of a thumb rest on top and a little bit of a guard. I say a little bit all the way around. And just a little bit of a beak at the back. Yes, there is a lanyard hole and this is the lanyard material that they sent with it. Remember though, this is marketed as a hunting knife and uh, you know it's highly agile in the hand as you'll see. I don't see this as a hunting knife. Uh, you know it'll do some of the tasks of hunting. I don't see it as a skinner. I mean look at the tip on that. Look how fine and precise that is. This to me is a carving knife. A nice bushcraft ta knife for carving tasks. That's the way I see this. By the way, this does have a two-year warranty on it as well from from Decathlon. They really stand behind their products that they sell, so I appreciate that. All right, that's enough about the specs and the design. Let's do a few tasks with it. Okay, I mentioned that I probably would not be doing some batoning. I changed my mind. I think we'll do just one little piece of wood. I may be able to cut a few things out of this for feather sticking. This is maple, and it's just a half of a round, as you can see. It's two, two and a quarter inches, would have been two and a quarter inches in diameter. And the reason I changed my mind is that if I would do this type of batoning, that smaller piece with a mora, I should be able to do it with this knife. So let's just do that. Now, the only thing I'm going to say, there is a knot down here at the, actually, let's start at the knot at the top. Might as well take advantage of the height and we'll put, put her through. Through the knot and through the rest of the stick. And absolutely, I didn't expect any damage with that. And there isn't, there's nothing showing on it. Um, you know what I'll do? I'll baton down the rest of these pieces in a moment, or these two pieces to choose one for feather sticking. But I wanted to make a tent peg today, but I thought I'd do it up a little bit different. Normally I'd take one of the splits that I baton and make a feather stick from that. But today I have, I just happened to cut down uh, some relatively green maple, a small branch of maple for another project. And I thought, you know, this is what I'd probably be making feather sticks out of, or not feather sticks, tent pegs out of anyway. So why don't I do it this way a little bit different now. In fact, if I hadn't have cut that branch off, I would have had my, or my notch for holding my guy line already. But this is all about doing it. Actually, we'll do it the way we do it by hand, which is to roll it in. Uh, I would normally baton this into the stick to show you some cross batoning. But... Nothing to say we can't do it the old school way, which is to carve it in by hand. And it carves plenty easy. Actually, this is a joy to carve with. Nice, easy create the L7 notch. Now I just have to turn it around and put a point on the other end. Let's put a point on our tent peg and the purpose of this test is not one to obviously show that it can be done but also just to test it in reverse grip to see what kind of comfort I have. The guard is a little bit funny. So you can see it's kind of got a two angles there. I wonder what it's going to feel like. Well the only way to demonstrate that is is to do it. So let's try this. Maple green or dry is still hard wood. But this made 
that made short work of this now, comfort. Uh, you know, it was okay up here. I, I prefer a nice ramp somewhere here to put my thumb, but it worked. I was a little concerned that the bird's beak was going to be uncomfortable in the hand, but in fact, it actually curves around the bottom of my palm here rather than pressing in. Handle's just a little longer than a lot of knives, so in fact, yeah, this actually worked out a little bit better than I expected for doing that cross chest lever cutting, scissor cut, whatever you want to call it. It's actually fun, you know? I could just keep doing this, but I think it's time to do some feather stick. So here's one of the splits off of that piece of maple I just batoned out with the knife, and I'm just looking at the edges. All good, very hard, dry wood. Let's see what we can do. So, yeah, maybe I will. I'll just start down the outside and see how that goes. I can always rotate it around to the inside. Let's just see. I think some of the outside is a little dry. When by dry, dry I mean old. Yeah, let's just rotate it to the, rotate it to the inside and see what happens. That was much easier. Gotta love a good thin scanty ground knife when it comes to doing feather sticks. You can get some really fine little feathers. Pull it back a little bit to get some longer curls. A lot of my curls are falling off because I'm running over a knot. Let's see if I can get some really small bugles. A little finer than that, even. Yeah, all right, those will take a spark. Those last ones that I'm making there, they will accept a spark. All right, not a complete feather stick, but enough to show that the knife is capable of feathering. Uh, just a few comments here. It's small. It is very small in my hand. While it's long enough, I have to really feel like I'm holding on to the knife in order to maintain control. If I, I have to consciously allow my grip to loosen up a little bit each time I run the knife down and just hold it a little looser in my hand. And I really don't like that. But it'll still feather. All right, but will it scrape? All right, let's do a little bit of scraping. First off, one of those splits of maple I had. A little birch bark to catch it on. Let's see what we can fuzz up here. Yeah, it's fuzzing. Not the best, but it's working. How about fat wood? Always important that we can scrape a little bit of fat wood. Yeah, lots of fat wood coming off here. Great, okay. Now how about my ferrous iron rod? Get rid of some of the guck off of the back of this. Let's see. There we go. Yep, so it does the job. I'm noticing it's not as good a scraper as some knives, but scrapes and scrapes well enough, just the same. All right, let's wrap this video up. All right, a few closing comments for the Sika 100 hunting knife made by Solonac of France and sold through Decathlon. Um, I don't see how they market this as a hunting knife. It's a bushcraft knife, at least to me. Having said that though, it has some pros and it has a few cons as well. To start with what I really like about it is that super fine tip. I would not hesitate to carve a spoon with that or anything else. Trap notches, like I just showed L7 notches, representative of a lot of different notches. Yeah, it, it's a nice blade for carving with. It is strong enough for doing batoning, but you know what, I'd reserve this for only small pieces of wood and then only if you didn't have something else to baton with. Um, I, that's about what I can say for the blade design. Now the handle, not as comfortable as I would like. Not bad, just not great. The I thought the blockiness would be a little bit uncomfortable here. It's not, actually. I don't really feel that edginess or the edges on this like I thought I would. Uh, but what I do find is that it's small. It's thin here and thin in that direction. So if you've got 
average, small to medium sized hands and maybe even edging towards large hands, this will work for you because it's certainly got the length to hold on to. It just doesn't have the girth for someone with large to extra large size hands. That's, that's what I think I can say about this. I don't think you can beat $20 though. This is, this is a great, great price and you can't beat decathlon for dealing with in terms of, of uh, you know, having things shipped to you or shipped to the nearby store or the, the return policies on them. They're really, really good people to deal with. I've been impressed and I'd buy. That's my first place I look for things now, of any style, because usually, I mean, Decathlon is international. It is huge. They have great buying power. They can offer things at a better price that are really good quality. So that's the reason why I've kind of shifted a lot of my outdoor clothing and, and equipment purchases to there. All right. As they say, the elephant in the room, the 5CR15MOV stainless steel made in China. Well, it's living up to its task or its expectations, at least so far. It, even now, I mean, I didn't do a whole lot of demonstration there, but I've had steels that wouldn't even withstand what I just did with those. This is just as sharp as it was when I started, and it is a full, true Scandi, a zero grind. There's no secondary bevel on this, so if it was going to roll or anything there, that's where it would do it, is right at that very fine edge. But nope, this is standing up well. But then again, I'm not expecting any more than that from it. Even that is, is somewhat of a, a bonus to have it last even this long. I want it to last at least a day, and then if I'm out for multiple days, I'll have my stones with me, a combination diamond ceramic stone or some wet stones, usually diamond ceramic because they're smaller and lighter and don't have to be wet to use. And then I'll bring the edge back at home. I'll take this home. This All this is going to need today, honestly, is to be run down a ceramic rod and then put on a strop. Now, yes, some of the saying that'll ruin the Scandi edge. I don't know about ruin, but it will change it. There's no question. If I keep running this down a ceramic rod and stropping it, I'm going to create a micro bevel for a secondary. I don't see that as a bad thing. I think that'll just have it last a little longer. It may not be quite as fine a carving knife with that, but it'll be a more durable edge. So I've said it a couple times now on different knives. 5CR 15 MOV, cheap, inexpensive, however you want to look at it, Chinese-made stainless steel. It's still got its qualities going for it. One being very inexpensive, two being something that's easy to sharpen when it does get dull. And it will, and like all steels it will, this may be just a little sooner than other steels. So we'll put that out there. Now the last thing I want to say is I was a little surprised because uh, it feels like it should scrape better than it does. There, there is a bit of a burr in the edge. I mean it does, it scrapes well, but I've got knives that scrape much better. But there's, a, there's actually enough of a burr to, for me to catch my fingernail on but not so much back here. Maybe that's what it was. Um, again, that's not a deal breaker because I find just about every knife, the spine has to be touched up once in a while. If you use the spine a lot, you have to touch it up with a file or a stone or something to get that burr back that you can use for scraping. So considering the price of the knife, not in the least disappointed. In fact, that's exactly what it is. It's worn smooth a little bit here because it's still sharp on the other side, the side I don't use. Okay. That's my thoughts on the Sika 100 hunting knife from Solanac and distributed by Decathlon. I will put the links to where you can purchase this on Decathlon Canada. I'm sure it's available elsewhere as well. And if you have any comments or questions, then put those in the comments section. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.